Good morning, brethren, sisters, Church of the Living God. Get your authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures. And turn in your authorized version of the scriptures to Genesis chapter 1. I'm going to be answering a question that was asked of me a little while ago. And um, this is something that many people do struggle with. Um, what does this mean? And by the title of this video, you're going to know what we're talking about. But we need to begin in Genesis chapter 1. Okay, we're going to be reading verses 20 on to verse 28 to begin in Genesis chapter 1, okay? <clears throat> Genesis chapter 1, verses 20 on to verse 28. Follow me along in the authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures. Follow me along. Genesis chapter 1, verses 20 on to verse 28. And God said, Let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life, and fowl that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. And God created great whales and every living creature that moveth, <clears throat> which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind, and every winged fowl <clears throat> after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas. And let the fowl multiply, and let fowl, excuse me, multiply in the earth. And the evening and the morning were the fifth day. And very quickly, look at verse 21. And God created great whales and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind, and every winged fowl after his kind. And God saw that it was good. Right away, we see something. God is a God of distinction, okay? There are many, ty there are many types of fowl that fly in the air, right? They're all fowls, right? There are types of whales out there, right? Different kinds of whales, you could say. But they're all whales. There are a variety of trees out there that differ one from another, but yet they're all trees, okay? There are many kinds of little dogs out there. Some are a little bit more <laughs> tolerable than others, yes. But there are different breeds, different kinds of dogs, but they're all dogs, see? <clears throat> so it says, after their kind. Okay, that's what that means. Okay? There are many birds, but they're all birds. There are many dogs, but they're all dogs. Okay? There are many fish, but they're all fish. Do you get it? Right? Okay? So, we have to establish that first, after their kind. You'll see here in a little bit. Now, let's continue from verses 24 on to verse 28. Now, I already did a video on this. Um, uh, I could not tell you offhand which one it was, <laughs> but I did do a video addressing this already. Okay, but let's continue from verse 24 on to verse 28. And God said, let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, again, cattle and creeping thing, and beast of the earth after his kind. And it was so. And God made the beast of the earth after his kind, and cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. And God saw that it was good. God is a goddess of distinction, okay? And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, after our likeness. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image, 
In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Now this mean now hold on a second. <clears throat> it says so God created man in his own image. Question for you. We are all man. But we differ one from another. There are different kindreds, different varieties. Are there not? Hmm? Why do we not all look the same if we were all created in the image of God? Hmm? Why do we not all look the same? So the actual likeness that we all look like our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father? No, 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 okay? What is this? And God, uh, so God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. We are made in the image of God. We all have a spirit, a soul, and a body. Okay? The Godhead is spirit, soul, and body. The Holy Ghost is the spirit. God the Father is the soul. The Word made flesh, our Lord Jesus Christ, is the body. Okay? We are made in the image of God, meaning that we all have a spirit, soul, and body. Okay? That's what that means. All right? I also have videos addressing that. All right? <clears throat> Verse 28, And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Okay? So, <clears throat> now, let's go to Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2. Okay? Okay? We will be reading verses 8 on to verse 17. Genesis chapter 2, verses 8 on to verse 17. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward, eastward in Eden. And there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life also in the midst of the garden and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. <clears throat> and a river went out of Eden to water the garden, and from thence it was parted, and became into four heads. The name of the first is Pison. That is it which compasseth the whole land of Havilah, where there is gold. And the gold of that land is good. There is the Bedlam and the Onyx Stone. And the name of the second river is Gihon. The same is it that compasseth the whole land of Ethiopia. <clears throat> and the name of the third river is Hittikiel. That is, that is it which goeth toward the east of Assyria. And the fourth river is Euphrates. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the Garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. <clears throat> but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Remember that. Remember that. Mark verse 17 in your set of scriptures, okay? Highlight it, underline it, do whatever you got to do, okay? <clears throat> All right. And now, let's look at verse 24 and on to verse 25. Uh, actually, let's look at verses 23 on to verse 25, where God took a rib out of Adam and made a woman. Woman means of man. Okay? Okay? Woman means of man. Okay? Woman came from man. Man came from the earth. Okay? Okay? Now, let's read verses 23 on to verse 25. And Adam said, 
This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman. Definition of what a woman is, of woman. Because she was taken out of man. That's what woman means, see? Because she was taken out of man. Taken out of man or of man, okay? Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. Look at this. <clears throat> and they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. Now before we read in Genesis chapter 3, what have we seen so far? That God created the, the whales, the fowl, the cattle, the creeping things after their kinds, right? Right? We see, we, we've already kind of looked at, okay? After their kind, okay? There are lots of kinds of fishes, but they're all fishes. Again, there are lots of kinds of cattle, but they're all cattle. Lots of kinds of dogs, but they're all dogs, and so on and so on, okay? But of man, verse 26 in Genesis chapter 1, And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, not that we all look the same as our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, okay? No, after our likeness, spirit, soul, and body, okay? Spirit, soul, and body. Okay? Okay? We, we get this so far? Okay? And in Genesis chapter 2, <clears throat> in Genesis chapter 2, we see the admonition here, the warning in verse 17, But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. So see... <sighs> That was the commandment. Don't eat of the tree of the uh, knowledge of good and evil. Okay? Guess what that is, friends? That's called works. Okay? Works. The very first dispensation in the scripture, the Garden of Eden, was totally and inexplicitly works. There was no faith involved in the Garden of Eden. Okay? None whatsoever. They were commanded not to eat of the tree of the um, knowledge of good and evil. That was the commandment. You can touch anything and eat it. Don't eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, okay? Hence, works. Do that, but don't do that. Okay? Do you get it thus far? Yes? Okay? Now, also in verse 25 we see and they were both naked the man and his wife and were not ashamed in this dispensation it was obedience it was all works okay plus it says and they were both naked the man and his wife and were not ashamed right up to this point there was no sin Man did not know anything of evil. He did not. There was no sin. No sin. Perfection. Okay? All they knew was our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. That's all they knew. God the Father. They had no knowledge of sin. They were innocent. Okay? Perfect. No sin. They had no knowledge of good and evil. All they knew was the Lord, our Father. Okay? But here, Genesis chapter 3. <clears throat> we will be reading... Oh! Let's go ahead and read this whole chapter, shall we? Let's go ahead and read this whole chapter. Genesis chapter 3. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. Talking about Satan, the created being. We talked about that many times before. And he said unto the woman, he went to the woman, not to the man. 
Okay, he went to Eve, not to Adam. Important to note that too. This gives you a glimpse of how Satan and his devils operate. Okay, Paul talks about this. These are they that creep in the houses, um, uh, leading away silly women laden with sins. Okay, important to remember that. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, questioning what God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat of it. Yes, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. Okay, look at verse 13 and go right across the page. At verse 17 in Genesis chapter 2. Go right across or however it is in your set of scriptures. Verse 17 in Genesis chapter 2. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. And uh, uh, you go ahead and look up at verses 15 and 16. And actually read verse 18 and 19. Where is anything about touching it? It's not there. Eve, in Genesis chapter 3, verse 3, neither shall ye touch it. Uh, God didn't say that. God did not say that. Okay? It's important to note. Because in the face of adversity, the serpent, maybe Eve was a little uh, taken aback, a little scared. I don't know. Adam was not present there. Satan went for Eve specifically. No mention of Adam here until it was too late. Okay? Let's continue. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as little g, God's comma, knowing good and evil. Aha! A clue. A clue. Look at that verse. Don't look at me. Look at the verse. For God doth know that in the day that ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened. Today. Okay? What, what does Satan offer you? What does Satan offer all these lost people? That your eyes will be open, right? If you disobey what God has said. I don't, yeah, did he say that? For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open. Satan promises to open your eyes, to give you eyes to see from the devil, right? <laughs> And when you look in Luke chapter 4, if you fall down and worship him, all will be thine. Right? He promises to open people's eyes. That's what he's offering. That your eyes will be open. You know, illuminated. Okay? And what is it? And for the purpose of, and ye shall be as gods, comma, knowing good and evil. Remember that. Remember that. Okay? Let's continue. And, wo and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes, your eyes will be opened. And a tree to the desire to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat. And gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were open. And, and look what happens. And they knew that they were naked. Look at verse 25 in Genesis chapter 2. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. No sin was there. They didn't need to be ashamed. Naked before the eyes of the Lord. Nothing to hide. They were innocent. 
The only thing that they were commanded not to do was to eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. You can do anything, but don't do this. Works. No faith. Works. Obedience. Works. Okay? That is what the first dispensation of Scripture was. And it's going to return to this type of in the uh, dispensation uh, during the Millennial Kingdom because God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, is going to be on the throne at Jerusalem. You're not going to need faith when you can go see God the Father, God manifest in the flesh. Well, you get it, right? Okay. Some of you don't. Some of you don't. Brethren, bear with me, okay? have to remember this kind of stuff. So... <clears throat> But now, now, verse 7 in Genesis chapter 3, And the eyes of them both were opened, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. Because, see, they had disobeyed their commandment. Don't eat of the tree. They ate of the tree. Okay? Their eyes were opened, and then suddenly, oh, oh, we're naked. They disobeyed, hence sin. Sin. Okay? Because sin, remember, is transgression of the law. Okay? That's the law right there. Don't eat of the tree. Do whatever you want. Just don't eat of that tree. You know that saying like uh, when P uh like there's a big red button on a council or something like that. And they say, go ahead and use this. But whatever you do, don't touch that red button. Right? Why is it that we as fallen man, first thing we want to do is touch that red button to see what happens, right? Let's continue. Verse 8. And, and right here. <laughs> right here. Uh, you got to love verse 8 in Genesis chapter 3. Okay, you have to. Um, because, and they heard the voice of the Lord God, the voice of the Lord God, walking in the garden in the cool of the day. I, I've asked this in several videos. Question. How does a voice walk? Unless... That voice, the word made flesh, had a body. Yeah. Yeah. Let's reread that. <clears throat> and they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. They hid themselves. Because they were guilty, and they knew they were guilty. That's why they were ashamed that they were naked, because they had disobeyed and did specifically what God said not to do. They were ashamed. They were guilty. They hid themselves after they sewed fig leaves together to cover themselves. Right? Okay, let's continue. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art, where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid, because I was naked, and I hid myself. Now, <clears throat> people like to point to verse 11, saying, well, see, God doesn't know everything. No, 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 no. No. What was going on here was, God was giving Adam the chance to man up. Okay? And he said, verse 11, who told thee that thou wast naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldest not eat? Giving him the chance to come clean. God already knew about uh, what had happened. Okay? He's omnipresent, omnipotent. He knows everything. He sees everything. Okay? He was giving Adam the opportunity to come clean. And the man said... The woman whom thou gavest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. 
The woman, blaming the woman, whom thou, blaming God, gave us to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. Blaming, every, uh, blaming other people instead of taking full responsibility. And see, he said, he does. He does. And I did eat. First it was the woman, which God gave him. And then, yeah, because of that, because of y'all, I did eat. See, it's always someone else's fault. This is present in every man, person, spiritual and body out there today. Okay? Called the Adamic nature. Let's continue. And the Lord God said unto the uh, oh, and the Lord God said unto the woman, okay, Adam blew it. Adam blew it. And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? Giving the woman, Eve, the chance. And the woman said, the serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. The devil made me do it. Yeah. And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shalt thou go, and thus shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. And here is the very first prophecy of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I addressed this in the uh, Revelation chapter 12 expository video. Okay? And I will put enmity between thee, Satan, and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed, the woman. In Revelation chapter 12, who is this woman? Israel. Okay? You look that up on your own time or watch that video of uh, Revelation chapter 12 expository video, okay? And I will put enmity between thee, Satan, and the woman, Israel, and between thy seed, those who follow him, Satan, and her seed. Her seed. Uh, who came of Israel? Salvation is of the Jews. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, God manifest in the flesh, came of Israel. See. Okay? So, and between thy seed and her seed, and it shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. So, Genesis chapter 3, verse 15 is the very first prophecy of God manifest in the flesh, of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, okay? Of uh, God uh, being born of a woman, okay? Okay? Unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. And Adam said, and unto Adam, he said, Behold, eh. and unto Adam, he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife. Ladies, sisters, women, you're married, the man is head over you. If you're not married, okay, you are to have spiritual headship, but you go to God our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, okay? Man is above the woman. You got a problem with that, sisters? Take it up with the father. Okay? Verse 17. And, Ad, and unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall I bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat of the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground. For out of it wast thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. And Adam called his wife's name Eve, because she was the mother of all living. 
Unto Adam also, and to his wife, did the Lord God make coats of skins and clothe them. There we see death. Okay? Death. Animals had to die to, um, to clothe Adam and Eve. Okay? I've already talked about that before in several other videos as well. Not going to get into it. Verse 22. Verse 22. Very, 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 very important for us. Okay? Verse 22. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us to know good and evil. Aha! A clue. And now, lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the Garden of Eden to till the ground from whence he was taken. So he drove out the man, and he placed at the east of the Garden of Eden cherubims, and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. The end of the very first dispensation. The, the end of it. Very first dispensation. The very first dispensation of the scriptures, dear brethren, works. Don't eat of the tree. Eat of the tree. Animals die to clothe them. Okay? They get booted out. End of that dispensation. Right there. Okay? Right there. Again, people, if anyone is telling you that it's faith alone from Genesis on to Revelation, I already did a video on that one as well, they, they lie to you. They lie to you. Where is faith in Genesis 1, 2, and 3? It's not there. It's works. Okay? Okay? You, you, you get me so far? Okay? Now, look at Genesis chapter 3, verse 5. For God doth know in the day that ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And Genesis chapter 3, verse 22. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us, to know good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand, and take also of the tree of life, and eat, and live forever. Therefore the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden, to till the ground from whence he was taken. Okay? In the very first dispensation, we knew what was, they, they knew what was good. Our Lord, God, the Father, they had no, nothing of evil because they were naked. They were naked in front of the Lord, not ashamed. They disobeyed and did uh, did what um, He commanded them not to do. Their eyes were open. They had sinned. They now knew what was good and what was evil. See. Okay? Knowing good and evil. It's knowing good and evil. There was no knowledge of evil until the disobedience of Adam and Eve. Okay? Okay? But the point is, and uh, verse 22, And the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us, to know good and evil. To know good and evil. To know good and evil. Go now to Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 4. Deuteronomy chapter 4. Deuteronomy chapter 4. We will be reading verses 1 on to verse 20. Okay, in Deuteronomy chapter 4. This now is the third dispensation. The dispensation under the law. Okay? Garden of Eden was the first dispensation. The dispensation of the patriarchs, as it is usually called, um, like Abraham, uh, Isaac, uh, Jacob, that kind of stuff. Okay? There was that dispensation. Okay? 
This is the third dispensation under the law. Okay? Now remember, ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Judgment. To know what is good and evil. Okay? One of the primary characteristics of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, is what? Judgment. Okay? God's love is perfectly executed in his judgments. Knowing good and evil. So, to be as God's is knowing good and evil. Which one is which? Okay? Because like I said, and as we looked at in the very first dispensation of the Bible, excuse me, in the scriptures, sorry for that. See, I still struggle with that too. It was works predicated upon your obedience and they disobeyed. That was it. Okay? Deuteronomy chapter 4, verses 1 on to verse 20. Okay? Now therefore hearken, O Israel, unto the statutes and unto the judgments which I teach you, for to do them, that ye may live and go in and possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers giveth you. Ye shall not, ye shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall ye diminish aught from it that ye may keep the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you. Your eyes have seen what the Lord did because of Baal Peor. For all the men that follow Baal Peor, the Lord thy God hath destroyed them from among, the, from among you. But ye that did cleave unto the Lord your God are alive every one of you this day. Behold, pay attention, I have taught you statutes and judgments even as the Lord my God commanded me that ye should do so in the land whither ye go to possess it keep therefore and do them for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight in the sight of the nations which shall hear all these statutes and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. Remember that. <clears throat> For what nation is there so great, who hath God so nigh unto them, as the Lord our God is in all things that we call upon him for? And what nation is there so great that hath statutes and judgments so righteous as all this law, which I set before you this day. Only take heed to thyself, and keep thy soul diligently, lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen, and lest they depart from thy heart all the days of thy life. But teach them thy sons and thy sons' sons, Who's supposed to teach children, by the way? What does that say? Hmm? Yeah. Let's continue. Especially the day that thou stoodest before the Lord thy God in Horeb, when the Lord said unto me, Gather me the people together, and I will make them hear my words, that they may learn to fear me all the days that they shall live upon the earth, and that they may teach their children that they may teach their children. Okay? Uh, uh, brother, who asked me about that? Hopefully that answers your question too. Okay? Let's continue. And ye came near and stood under the mountain, and the mountain burned with fire unto, unto the mist of heaven, with darkness, clouds, and thick darkness. And the Lord spake unto you out of the mist of the fire, he heard the voice of the words, but saw no similitude, only ye heard a voice. And he declared unto you his covenant, which he commanded you to perform, even ten commandments. And he wrote them upon two tables of stone. 
And the Lord commanded me at that time to teach you statutes and judgments that ye might do them in the land whither ye go over to possess it. Take ye therefore good heed unto yourselves. For ye saw no manner of similitude on the day that the Lord spake unto you in Horeb out of the mist of fire. Out of out of the mist of the fire, excuse me. Lest ye corrupt yourselves and make you a graven image, the similitude of any figure, the likeness of male or female, the likeness of any beast that is on the earth, the likeness of any winged fowl that flieth in the air, okay? The likeness of anything that creepeth on the ground, the likeness of any fish that is in the waters beneath, and lest thou lift up thine eyes unto heaven, and when thou seest the sun, S-U-N, and the moon and the stars, even all the hosts of heaven, shouldest be driven to worship them and serve them, which the Lord thy God hath divided unto all nations under the whole heaven. But the Lord hath taken you and brought you forth out of the iron furnace, even out of Egypt, to be unto him a people of inheritance, as ye are this day. Okay? Very quickly. The Jew is the apple of God's eye. The Jew is the apple of God's eye. And God took the children of Israel out of Egypt to bring them unto himself to be for him a people. And also an example unto the heathen who were not Jews, who worshipped their own gods, okay, to be an example unto them of the true and living God. <clears throat> right here, look at verse uh, 5 on to verse 8 again. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my God commanded me, that ye should do so in the land whither ye go to possess it. Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations, which shall hear all these statutes and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and an understanding people. For what nation is there so great who hath God so nigh on to them, as the Lord our God is in all things that we call upon him for? And what nation is there so great that has statutes and judgments so righteous as all this law which I set before you this day? The Jew in the Old Testament were the representatives of our Lord, of our God, our Father, Jesus Christ. They were his chosen people. They still are, okay? But under the law, he brought them out to be his examples onto the other peoples of the earth, okay? By their judgments, by their statutes that he gave unto them to keep. See, think about this. We today, the Church of the Living God, in this dispensation, the time of the Gentiles, okay? We are called to follow the scriptures and to live in accordance with the scriptures, knowing good and evil, hello, because we have a perfect standard, the authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, the true and real scriptures. He added us, the Gentile, onto the tree of the Jew. Okay? So, in the Old Testament, the Jewish people were God's soul representatives. And you will read, if you look on your own time, for example, in the book of Esther, that where it says that many made themselves Jews. Okay? And also in the book of Jonah, where many sacrificed and made vows unto the Lord God because of Jonah, because they threw him into the sea and the sea stopped their raging. Okay? The Jewish people in the Old Testament were God's representatives, okay? Okay? Meant to shew forth his statutes, judgments, his 
righteousness in the way they live and the fact that they adhered to the scriptures, okay, and that they were a holy people unto our Lord God. Holy, called out, separate than, other than, okay? Okay? And we today, as the church of the living God, we are called, both Jews and Gentiles of the church of the living God, are called to be an example onto the heathen out there. Do you get it? Do you get it? Okay? Okay? So you see, why we read this is, since the Garden of Eden, since that disobedience, man's eyes have been opened, knowing good and evil. Okay? So, one of the aspects of God is knowing good and evil. And in our beginning as man, all we knew was the Lord. But in the disobedience and sin, our eyes were open and we knew what sin was. Okay? And God chose Israel to this day, still the apple of God's eye. Okay? To be his representative. Okay? And hence, when our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, God manifest in the flesh, the Word made flesh, came to earth. First time. In the Gospel accounts, he was offering the kingdom of heaven unto the Jewish people. Prophesied that they would reject that. They did. He died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. He shed his blood, the blood of God on the cross, to make atonement for our sins. Okay? And you come to him through brokenness, godly sorrow, and have contrition that your sins put him on the cross. Okay? You come to our Lord broken and contrite and believe on him and call upon him. Okay? We, we, we get that. But see, Knowing good and evil pertains unto what? Judgment. And you see all these uh, Christians out there saying, don't judge, don't judge. Right, right. But yet knowing good and evil requires judgment, doesn't it? Uh, are you following me? Are you following me? Turn very quick. About um, about how we were just talking about how God chose Israel to be his representatives. Okay? Go to Romans chapter 3. Come on, fingers, work with me. Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. Romans chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. What advantage then hath the Jew, or what profit is there in, uh, there, or what profit is there of circumcision? Much every way, chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. Okay, and also too in uh, Romans chapter two, Romans chapter two, verses seventeen. On to verse 24. Romans chapter 2, verses 17 on to verse 24. Behold, thou art called a Jew, and restest in the law, and makest thy boast of God, and knowest his will, and approvest the things that are more excellent, being instructed out of the law, knowing good and evil. See? Okay? And are confident that thou thyself art a guide of the blind, a light of them which are in darkness, an instructor of the foolish, a teacher of babes, which has the form of knowledge and of the truth in the law. Thou, therefore, which teachest another, teachest thou not thyself? Thou that preachest a man should not steal, dost thou steal? Thou that sayest a man should not commit adultery, dost thou commit adultery? Thou that abhorrest idols, dost thou commit sacrilege? 
thou that makest thy boast of the law, through breaking the law, dishonorest thou God? For the name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles through you, as it is written. So see, here in Romans chapter 2, verses 17 on to verse 24, Paul is addressing hypocritical judgment. Okay? Okay? If I were a drunkard and said to you, don't drink wine or don't get drunk, uh, I'd be a hypocrite, wouldn't I? Wouldn't I? If I were a sodomite, which I used to be before I was saved, and I say to you, sodomy is evil, don't you get away from it, but yet practicing it myself, hypocrite. Okay? But as we see with why we looked at this, the Jews knew, and what does it say here? Verse 18, And knowest his will, and approvest the things that are more excellent, being instructed out of the law, and art confident that thou thyself art a guide of the blind, a light of them which are in darkness. Okay? Okay? Now, Go to John, chapter 10. John, chapter 10. John, chapter 10. John, chapter 10. <clears throat> oh, let's get a good context on this, shall we? Um... <clears throat> John chapter 10, let's read verses 22 oh, on to verse 38 in John chapter 10. We're going to get a good context on this. Okay, John chapter 10, verses 22 on to verse 38. And it was at Jerusalem, the feast of the dedication, and it was winter. Someone out there. Sorry. Okay. <clears throat> and Jesus walked in the temple in Solomon's porch. Then came the Jews round about him and said unto him, How long dost thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. Now, Jews, right here at this time especially, knew what to look for, knew who to look for. They had the scriptures, they had the law. They approved the things most excellent. And unto them were committed the oracles of God. Remember? He brought the children of Israel out of Egypt to the promised land and gave them statutes and judgments that they may be an example unto the nations. Right? We looked at that in Deuteronomy chapter 4. Okay? Ye shall be as gods knowing Good and evil. The man has become as one of us, knowing good and evil. Are, are you following me thus far? Are you following me? Yes? Let's continue. Okay? They should have known. But they were blind. They were blind because they were stuck up on themselves. See? Let's continue. <clears throat> Verse 25. Jesus answered them, I told you, and ye believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. They should have known that. Okay? Let's continue. But ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Oh, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my Father's hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all. The soul is greater than the body. Okay? My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. Okay? I and my Father are one. Spirit, soul, and body. Okay? 
Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Jesus answered them, Many good works have I shewed you from my Father. For which, for which of those works do ye stone me? The Jews answered him, saying, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy, and because that thou, being a man, makest thyself God. See, they knew that. <laughs> they got that. They were on that right away. Okay? Because Jesus Christ, God manifested in the flesh, the fullness of the Godhead, bodily, spirit, soul, and body, said, uh, what did he say? I am my Father and one, our one. Here I am, the Father, your promised Messiah, the Son of David, your King. Hello? They didn't see that because they were blind, right? Because what does he say? Because what it says here in verse 26, But ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep. As I said unto you, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father, which gave them me, is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. My hand. Father's hand. One. Verse 30. Okay? They understood that, but they didn't understand that <laughs> he was right there. Okay? Because he said they were not of his sheep. Let's continue. <clears throat> Verse 34, Jesus answered them, Is it not written in your law? I said, Ye are gods. Hmm. Hmm. If he called them gods, unto whom the word of God came unto them, who? The Jews were committed the oracles of God. Okay? You get it? Unto who? Them. Were committed the oracles of God. Who's the them? Who? The Jews. Salvation is of the Jews, dear friend. Okay? Let's continue. If he called them, Luchi, gods, unto whom the word of God came, and the scripture cannot be broken, say ye of him whom the Father has sanctified and sent into the world, thou blasphemest because I said, I am the Son of God? If I, if I do not the works of my Father, believe me not. But if I do that, but if I do, though ye believe not me, believe the works that ye may know, hello, and believe that the Father is in me and I in him. To know knowing good and evil. And we saw in Deuteronomy chapter 4, right, that God our Father brought them out to establish them to live by his commandments, his statutes, that all the nations around Israel will be like, wow. Hence, what we, the Church of the Living God, are to be today. Okay? Because we were grafted in to the tree of the Jew. See? Do you get it? But let's look at verses 34 and 35 again. Jesus answered them, is, is it not written in your law, I said, ye are gods. Ye are gods. If he called them gods, right there, look at, look at, don't look at me. Look at verse 35. That explains it. Look at that. If he called them gods, comma, Unto whom the word of God came. Okay? What is he quoting there? Psalm 82. Go to Psalm 82. Psalm 82. Okay? Psalm 82. God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. 
He judgeth among the gods. The gods. How long will ye judge unjustly and accept the person of the wicked? Shilah. Okay? Go to Psalm 37. Hold your place here. Go to Psalm 37. Psalm 37, verses 27 on to verse 40. Psalm 37, verses 27 on to verse 40. Okay? Or do I have 29? Do I have 29? Okay. Depart from evil and do good, and dwell forevermore. For the Lord loveth judgment. And forsaketh not his saints. They are preserved forever. But the seed of the wicked shall be cut off. The righteous shall inherit the land and dwell therein forever. The mouth of the righteous speaketh wisdom. And his tongue talketh of judgment. The law of his God is in his heart. None of his steps shall slide. The wicked watcheth the righteous, and seeketh to slay him. The Lord will not leave him in his hand, nor condemn him when he is judged. Wait on the Lord, and keep his way. And he shall exalt thee to inherit the land. When the wicked are cut off, thou shalt see it. Make a part. I have seen the wicked in great power, and spreading himself like a green bay tree. Yet he passed away, and lo, he was not. Yea, I saw him, but he could not be found. Mark the perfect man, and behold the upright, for the end of that man is peace. But the transgressors shall be destroyed together. The end of the wicked shall be cut off. But the salvation of the righteous is of the Lord. He is their strength in the time of trouble. And the Lord shall help them and deliver them. He shall deliver them from the wicked and save them because they trust in him. Psalm 82, verse 1. God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. He judgeth among the gods. Congregation of the mighty. Okay? Psalm 82. Doctrinally, dispensationally, this is for the Jews. Okay? Okay? Okay, and remember, if judgment uh, first began at the house of God, okay, for us today, and I'm not talking about those buildings either, okay? Go now to Psalm 147. Psalm 147. Psalm 147. Psalm 147. Praise ye the Lord, for it is good to sing praises unto our God, for it is pleasant, and praise is comely. The Lord doth build up Jerusalem. He gathereth together the outcasts of Israel. He healeth the broken in heart. He bindeth up their wounds. He telleth the number of the stars. He calleth them all by their names. Great is our Lord, and of great power. His understanding is infinite. The Lord lifteth up the meek. He casteth the wicked down to the ground. Sing unto the Lord with thanksgiving. Sing praise upon the harp unto our God, who covereth the heavens with clouds, who prepareth rain for the earth, who maketh grass to grow upon the mountains. He giveth to the beast his food, and to the young ravens which cry. He delighteth not in the strength of the horse. He taketh not pleasure in the legs of a man. The Lord taketh pleasure in them that fear him, and those that hope in his mercy. Praise the Lord, O Jerusalem. Praise thy God, O Zion, for he has strengthened the bars of thy gates. He hath blessed thy children with thee, within thee. He maketh peace in thy borders, and filleth thee with the finest of the wheat. He sendeth forth his commandment upon the earth. His word runneth very swiftly. 
He giveth the snow like wool. He scattereth the hoarfrost like ashes. He casteth forth his ice like morsels. Who can stand before his cold? He sendeth out his word and melteth them. He causeth the wind to blow and the rivers, rivers act and the waters flow. He sheweth his word unto Jacob. Who's Jacob? Israel. His statutes and his judgments unto Israel. You gotta love verse 19 there. You really do because Jacob is defined by Israel even though you can read in uh, Genesis uh, chapter 31 and 32. Okay? But right there. He hath not... Uh, he sheweth his word unto Jacob. Who is Jacob? He His statutes and judgments unto Israel. He had not dealt so with any nation. And as for his judgments, they have not known them, praise ye the Lord. Who's the day? And uh, that's a semicolon right there. Uh, he hath not dealt so with any nation, semicolon, and as for his judgments, any other nation, they have not known them. Praise ye the Lord. Ye shall be as little chief gods, knowing good and evil. Before, before the fall, they didn't know evil, because they didn't. It's when they disobeyed the commandments, sin came in. See. Okay? Verse 2 in Psalm 82. Oh, oh, wait, 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 wait. Got another, got another real good one for you. Sorry about that. Go to Isaiah 56. Isaiah 56. Verses 1 and 2. Thus saith the Lord, Isaiah 56, verses 1 and 2. Thus saith the Lord, keep ye judgment, and do justice. For my salvation is near to come, and my righteousness to be revealed. Blessed is the man that doeth this, and the son of man that layeth hold on it, that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it, dispensational difference right there, and keeping his hand from doing any evil. Psalm 82. God standeth in the congregation of the mighty. The congregation of the mighty. Israel. He judgeth among the gods. Is he talking about Pluto? Jupiter? Semiramis? Nimrod? The Pope? Let's keep reading. How long will ye judge unjustly and accept the persons of the wicked? Sila. Psalm 58. Psalm 58. Psalm 58. Do ye indeed speak righteousness, O congregation? Do ye judge uprightly, O ye sons of men? Yea, in heart ye work wickedness. Yea, the ye ah, yea, in heart ye work wickedness. Sorry. Ye weigh the violence of your hands in the earth. The wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as soon as they be born, speaking lies. Born into sin. Everyone is born a sinner. Okay? Their poison is like the poison of a serpent. They are like the deaf adder that stoppeth her ear, which will not hearken to the voice of charmers, charming never so wisely. Break their teeth, O God, in their mouth. Break out the great teeth of the young lions, O Lord. Let them melt away as the waters which run continually. When he bendeth his bow to shoot his arrows, let them be as cut in pieces. As a snail which melteth, let every one of them pass away like the untimely birth of a woman, that they may not see the sun, S-U-N. Before your pots can feel the thorns, he shall take them away as with a whirlwind, both living and in his wrath. The righteous shall rejoice when he seeth the vengeance. He shall wash his feet in the blood of the wicked, so that a man shall say, Verily there is a reward for the righteous, verily... 
He is a God that judgeth in the earth. Judgeth. Judgeth. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Okay? Isaiah chapter Isaiah chapter 5, uh, Psalm 82 again. How long will ye judge unjustly and accept the persons of the wicked? Selah. Isaiah chapter 5. Isaiah chapter 5. And for instruction and in righteousness for today, uh, I don't care what government, what nation you are in under heaven. Isaiah chapter 5, verses 20 on to verse 25. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. Woe unto them that are mighty to drink wine and men of strength to mingle strong drink, which justify the wicked for reward. And take away the righteousness of the righteous from him. Therefore, as the fire devoureth the stubble, and the flame consumeth the chaff, so their root shall be as rottenness, and their blossom shall go up as dust, shall go up as dust, because they have cast away the law of the Lord of hosts, and despised the word of the Holy One of Israel. Therefore is the anger of the Lord kindled against his people. Speaking of the Jews. Okay. And he hath stretched forth his hand against them and hath smitten them. And the hills did tremble and their carcasses were torn in the midst of the streets. For all this, his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. Okay. Okay. Psalm 82, verse 3. Verse 3 and 4. Now, ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil, pertaining on judging, knowing what is good, knowing what is evil. Okay? Here's what's good. Defend the poor and fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and needy. Deliver the poor and needy. Rid them out of the hand of the wicked. Rid them out of the hand of the wicked. Go to Proverbs 31. You know, so many people, when it comes to the book of Proverbs, you know, especially Proverbs 31, they, they, we like to take a big notice to verses 10 on the verse 31, which is about a godly woman. Amen, 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 amen. Boop. Let's read verses 1 on to verse 9 in Proverbs chapter 31. And note this. Note this right away. The words of King Lemuel. King. The prophecy that his mother taught him. What my son? And what the son of my womb? And what the son of my vow? Give not thy strength unto women, like Solomon did, nor thy ways to that which destroyeth kings, kind of like Solomon did. It is not for kings, O Lemuel, it is not for kings to drink wine, nor for princes strong drink, lest they drink and forget the law and pervert the judgment and pervert the judgment of any of the afflicted. Give strong drink unto him that is ready to perish, and wine unto those that be of heavy hearts. Let him drink and forget his poverty, and remember his misery no more. Open thy mouth for the dumb in all, in the cause of all. Stat. Open thy mouth for the dumb in the cause of all, such as are appointed to destruction. Dumb, not being able to speak. Okay? Open thy mouth. Judge righteously. 
and plead the cause of the poor and the needy. Judge righteously. How do you judge righteously? By your feelings, right? Uh, this, this is the authorized version of the scriptures. Here. This is how you judge righteously. According to the scriptures, dear friends. Okay. That your feelings. Not a creed from the Catholics. Oh, wow. No. 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 Knowing good and evil. Judging. Judging. See. Okay. Well, we ain't done. We ain't done. You asked for this. You get me. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 10. Back to Deuteronomy. You notice, too, I'm sure you have, that we have uh, looked at very little in the Pauline epistles. Right? You've noticed that. I'm sure you have. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verses 12. On to verse 22. Close out that chapter. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verses 12 on to verse uh, 22 to close out that chapter. And now, Israel, what doth the Lord thy God require of thee? But to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. To keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes, which I command thee this day for thy good. Behold, the heaven and the heaven of heavens is the Lord's, thy God. The earth also, with all that therein is. Only the Lord had a delight in thy fathers to love them. And he chose their seed after them. Even you above all people, as it is this day. Circumcise, therefore, the foreskin of your heart, and be no more stiff-necked. For the Lord your God is a God of gods, and a Lord of lords, a great God, a mighty, and a terrible, which, which regardeth not persons, nor taketh reward. He doth execute the judgment of the fatherless and widow, and loveth the stranger in giving him food and raiment. Love ye therefore the stranger, for ye were strangers in the land of Egypt. Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God, him shalt thou serve, and to him shalt thou cleave, and swear by his name. He is thy praise, and he is thy God that hath done for thee these great and terrible things which thine eyes have seen. Thy fathers went down into Egypt with threescore and ten persons. And now the Lord thy God hath made thee as the stars of heaven for multitude. Okay? To do this, in uh, Psalm, go back to Psalm 82, uh, verses 3 and 4, defend the, po the poor and fatherless, do justice to the afflicted and needy. Deliver the poor and needy. Rid them out of the hand of the wicked. Okay? In knowing the Lord, the fulfillment of this is in that judgment. Knowing good and evil. See? And remember, they were called to be a kingdom of priests. Okay? Kings and priests. Remember? I, I, you follow me, right? Okay. But one more. One more on this, and then we're going to get to verse 5. Okay. Verse 5. Go to Job. Job chapter 29. Job chapter 29. Job chapter 29. Moreover, Job com continued his parable and said, Oh, that I were as in months past, as in the days when God preserved me, when his candle shined upon my head, and when by his light I walked through darkness. 
as I was in the days of my youth, when the secret of God was upon my tabernacle, when the Almighty was yet with me, when my children were about me, when I washed my steps with butter, and the rock poured me out rivers of oil. When I went out to the gate through the city, when I prepared my seat in the street, the young men saw me and hid themselves, and the aged arose and stood up. The princes refrained talking and laid their hand on their mouth. The nobles held their peace, and their tongue cleaved to the roof of their mouth. When the ear heard me, then it blessed me, and when the eye saw me, it gave witness to me. Because I delivered the poor that cried, and the fatherless, and him that had none to help him. The blessing of him that was ready to perish came upon me, and I caused the widow's heart to sing for joy. I put on righteousness, and it clothed me. My judgment was as a robe and a diadem. I was eyes to the blind, and feet was I to the lame. I was a father to the poor. And the cause which I knew not, I searched out. And I break the jaws of the wicked and pluck the spoil out of his teeth. Then I said, I shall die in my nest. I shall multiply my days as the sand. My root was spread out by the waters, and the dew lay all night upon my branch. My glory was fresh in me, and my bow was renewed in my hand. Unto me men gave ear. Pay attention to this. Unto me men gave ear and waited and kept silence at my counsel. After my words they spake not again, and my speech dropped upon them. Dropped upon them like a gavel. And they waited for me as for the rain, and they opened their mouth wide as for the latter rain. If I laughed on them, they believed it not. And the light of my countenance they cast not down. I chose out their way, and sat chief, and dwelt as a king in the army, as one that comforteth the mourners. A good example of in Psalm 82, verses 3 and 4. Defend the poor and fatherless, do justice to the afflicted and needy, deliver the poor and needy, rid them out of the hand of the wicked. Okay? That is what the Jew was to be in the Old Testament, to live by God's standard. We, today, in this dispensation, the time of the Gentiles, which is coming to an end, we are to live according to his standards, his statutes, found for us in the scriptures. Okay? Pauline epistles specifically. Okay? Lots of instruction and in righteousness, but doctrine for us specifically in this dispensation, Pauline epistles. Okay? Do, do you get me? Do you get me? And uh, what, 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 what was that in James? Very quickly, we got to go to James. Very quickly, go to James. James, a time of Jacob's trouble epistle. Okay. James chapter 1. Uh, verses 26 and verse 27. If any man among you seem to be religious, and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart. This man's religion is vain. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. Go back to Psalm 82. Let's continue. Verse 5. Verse 5. They know not Neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. They know not. Neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. Isaiah chapter 4. Or Isaiah chapter 1. Excuse me. Isaiah chapter 1. Isaiah chapter 1 verses 1 under verse 4. 
the vision of Isaiah the son of Amaz, which he saw concerning Judah and Jerusalem in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. Hear, O heavens, and give ear, O earth, for the Lord has spoken. I have nursed and brought up children, and they have rebelled against me. The ox knoweth his owner, and the ass his master's crib. But Israel doth not know, my people doth not consider. Ah, sinful nation, a people laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers. They have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. They are gone away backwards. Verse 5 in Psalm 82. They know not, neither will they understand. Isaiah, you, you kind of figure where this one is going next. Isaiah chapter 6, verses 9 on to verse 12. Isaiah chapter 6, verses 9 on to verse 12. Where um, Isaiah says, here am I, send me. Okay, you can read uh, Isaiah chapter 6. Okay, and he said, verses 9 on to verse 12. And he said, go and tell this people. Hear ye indeed, but understand not. And see ye indeed, but perceive not. Make the heart of this people fat, and make their ears heavy, and shut their eyes, lest they see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and consider, and be healed, and convert, excuse me, and be healed. Then said I, Lord, how long? And he answered, Until the cities be wasted without inhabitant, and the houses without man, and the land be utterly desolate, and the Lord have removed men far away, and there be a great forsaking in the midst of the land. Psalm 82, verse 5. They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. Romans chapter 1. I, th I, I saw this. Uh, the Lord showed me this. And it's like, yeah, yeah. Romans chapter 1. 18 on to verse 25. Romans chapter 1, verses 18 on to verse 25. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and righteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has shewed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. And changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man, and to birds and to four-footed beasts and creeping things. Remember what we read in Deuteronomy chapter 4 already, right? Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie, and worshipped and served the creature more than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. Verse 5. In uh, Psalm 82, they know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. All right. Psalm 11. Psalm 11. Psalm 11. I hope you're there already. <clears throat> Psalm 11. 
In the Lord put I my trust. How say ye to my soul, flee as a bird to your mountain? For lo, the wicked bend their bow. They make ready their arrow upon the string, that they may privily shoot at the upright in heart. If the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? The foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Look at verse 4. The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord is in his holy temple. Today, in this dispensation, the time of the Gentiles, okay, your body, ye are the temple of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost, Jesus Christ, God our Father, the Lord is that spirit, okay? The Lord is in his holy temple. Notice how that follows in ver from verse 3. If the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? The Lord is in his holy temple. Comma. The Lord's throne is in heaven. His eyes behold. His eyelids try the children of men. Talking about judgment again. Okay? The Lord tried the righteous. But the wicked and him that loveth violence his soul... His own body, his soul hated. Upon the wicked he shall rain snares, fire, and brimstone, and a horrible tempest. This shall be the portion of their cup. You, you're looking at verse 7, right? For the righteous Lord loveth righteousness, his countenance doth behold the upright. Okay, and Psalm 82 again. Psalm 82. Come on, fingers work with me. Psalm 82, verse 5. They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. Are out of course. And what does Paul have to say about foundations? 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. <clears throat> oh. Verse 11. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, God our Father. Our foundation is Jesus Christ. Okay? We, we get that, right? Right? Okay? Now go back to Psalm 82. Okay? I have said, verse 6 and 7, I have said, Ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. Ye are gods. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Hold your place here. Go back to Genesis. Go back to Genesis chapter 3, verse 22. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us, to know good and evil. Who have said, ye are gods. Genesis chapter 3, verse 22. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us to know good and evil. Ye are gods. And all of you are children of the Most High. Jews, children of the Most High. Okay? His people brought out to be his representatives, as we saw in Deuteronomy chapter 4 already, okay? But ye shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. Okay? One second here, brethren. All right. Go to, okay? Verse 6 and 7 again. I have said ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. But ye shall die like men, and fall like one of the princes. Psalm 50. 
Psalm 50. Psalm 50. Psalm 50. But ye shall die like men, and shall fall like one of the princes. Okay? Verse 21 on to verse 23 in Psalm 50. Actually, you know what, brethren? Let's read this whole psalm instead. Okay? Psalm 50. The mighty God, even the Lord, has spoken, and called the earth from the rising of the sun unto the going down thereof. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, God has shined. Our God shall come and shall not keep silence. A fire shall devour before him, and it shall be very temptuous round about him. He shall call to the heavens from above and to the earth, that he may judge his people. Gather my saints together unto me, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice, and the heavens shall declare his righteousness. For God is judge himself. Selah. That also, by the way, uh, plays into verse 8 arise, in Psalm 82. Arise, O God, judge the earth, for thou shalt inherit all nations. Talking about at his second coming, when our Lord Jesus Christ comes back with us, his church, his body, his bride. Okay? We come back down with him. Okay? Arise, O God, judge the earth, for thou shalt inherit all nations. Okay? The millennial kingdom. Let's continue in Psalm 50. <clears throat> Where were we? Okay. Uh, verse 7. Hear, O my people, and I will speak, O Israel, and I will testify against thee. I am God, even thy God. I will not reprove thee for thy sacrifices or thy burnt offerings to have been continually before me. I will take no bullock out of thy house, nor he goats out of thy folds, for every beast of the forest is mine. And the cattle upon a thousand hills. I know all the fowls of the mountains. And all the wild beasts of the field are mine. If I were hungry, I would not tell thee. For the world is mine and the fullness thereof. Will I eat the flesh of bulls or drink the blood of goats? Offer unto God thanksgiving and pay thy vows unto the Most High. And call upon me in the day of trouble. I will deliver thee. And thou shalt glorify me. But unto the wicked. God saith. What hast thou to do to declare my statutes? Or that thou shouldest take my covenant. In thy mouth. Seeing thou hatest instruction. And castest my words. Behind thee. When thou sawest the thief. Then thou consentest with him. And hast been partaker. With adulterers. Uh, Psalm 82. Verse 2, how long will you judge unjustly and accept the persons of the wicked? Shelah. Back to Psalm 50. Thou, uh, picking up at verse 19, thou givest thy mouth to evil, and thy tongue frameth deceit. Thou sittest and speakest against thy brother. Thou slanderest thine own mother's son. These things hast thou done, and I kept silence. Thou thoughtest that I was altogether such an one as thyself. Ah, 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 ah. But I will reprove thee, and set them in order before thine eyes. Now consider this. Ye that forget God, lest I tear you in pieces, and there be none to deliver. Whoso offereth praise glorifieth me, and to him that ordereth his conversation aright will I shew the salvation of God. Remember verse 21 here in Psalm 50. That will come into play later. And go back to Psalm 82, verse 6 and 7. I have said, ye are gods, knowing good and evil, Judging according to the scriptures. Okay? To know good and evil. And all of you are children of the Most High. Okay? 
If you are saved, born again, converted, you have the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, living within you, and he will guide you into all truth. Okay? Do you get it? But ye shall die like men, and fall like one of the princes. Arise, O God, judge the earth, for thou shalt inherit all nations. Reference unto the millennial kingdom. Okay? And you also have to remember Psalm 115. Psalm 115. Psalm 115. Okay. Psalm 115. Not unto us, O Lord, not unto us, but unto thy name give glory, for thy mercy and for thy truth's sake. Wherefore should the heathen say, Where is now their God? But our God is in the heavens. He hath done whatsoever he hath pleased. Their idols are silver and gold, the work of men's hands. They have mouths, but they speak not. Eyes have they, but they see not. They have ears, but they hear not. Noses have they, but they smell not. They have hands, but they handle not. Feet have they, but they walk not. Neither speak they through their throat. They that make them are like unto them. So is everyone that trusteth in them. O Israel, trust thou in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. O house of Aaron, Trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. Israel, Jacob, God's chosen people, the apple of his eyes, of his eye, the Jew. O house of Aaron, the ones who were to teach. Okay? Ye that fear the Lord, trust in the Lord. He is their help and their shield. The Lord hath been mindful of us. He will bless us. He will bless the house of Israel. He will bless the house of Aaron. He will bless them that fear the Lord, both small and great. The Lord shall increase you more and more, you and your children. Ye are blessed of the Lord which made heaven and earth. The heaven, even the heavens, are the Lord's. But the earth hath he given to the children of men. The dead praise not the Lord, neither any that go down into silence. We will bless the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. Praise the Lord. And then, of course, then, of course, going back to Psalm 82. Arise, O God, judge the earth, for thou shalt inherit all nations. Psalm 146. Psalm 146. Come on, fingers work. Psalm 146. Psalm 146. Praise ye the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. Will I live? Will I praise the Lord? I will sing praises unto my God while I have any being. Put not your trust in princes, nor in the Son of Man, in whom there is no help. His breath goeth forth. He returneth to his earth. In that very day his thoughts perish. Happy is he that hath the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord his God, which made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that therein is, which keepeth truth forever, which executeth judgment for the oppressed, which giveth food to the hungry, <clears throat> which giveth food to the hungry. The Lord loseth the prisoners. The Lord opened the eyes of the blind. The Lord raiseth them that are bowed down. The Lord loveth the righteous. The Lord preserveth the strangers. He relieveth the fatherless and widow. But the way of the wicked he turneth upside down. 
The Lord shall reign forever, even thy God, O Zion, unto all generations. Praise you, Lord. So you see, brethren, I have said, verse 6, Ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. Okay? Children of the Most High. God's chosen people, the children of Israel. Okay? For us today in this dispensation, okay? In this dispensation today, we are his bones and his flesh. Okay? And we are to judge people according to the scriptures. According to the scriptures. Okay? So, when our Lord Jesus Christ in John chapter 10 said, is it now written in your law, right here, this is what he was referencing, ye are gods, it is that they know what is good and evil. And unto them were committed the oracles of God. Scriptures. So, when he said that, unto the Pharisees and Sadducees and those guys, okay, they were the ones that knew the scriptures, that knew what to look for, but yet they were blind. See? Okay? But yet they were blind. Hence, go back now to Psalm 50. Psalm 50. Look at verse 21 in Psalm 50 again. These things hast thou done, and I kept silence. Thou thoughtest that I was altogether such a one as thyself, but I will reprove thee and set them in order before thine eyes. Who was it who said, I will set my throne above the stars of God. I will be like the Most High. Who said that? We know this. Let's look at it again. Isaiah chapter 14. You need to have this from uh, Isaiah 14. You, have, you need to keep that lodged in your head. Okay? Isaiah 14. Isaiah 14. Verses 12 on to verse 15. How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said, In thine heart I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. Satan. Who said this? Lucifer. Satan. The devil. Because when you read in Ezekiel chapter 10, uh, 28, look this up on your own time, he was taken by his own beauty. And because of that, his you know what? You know what? Let's just go there. Uh, Ezekiel chapter 28. Ezekiel chapter 28. Okay? <clears throat> Ezekiel chapter 28. Verses 16 on to verse 17. In Ezekiel chapter 28. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee with violence, and thou hast sinned. Therefore will I cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. I will cast thee to the ground. I will lay thee before kings, they that they may behold thee. When our Lord quotes Psalm 82, ye are gods, okay? Look at me. It says in Genesis, when Satan tempted Eve, 
God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And the Lord said, uh, man has become as one of us, knowing good and evil. Okay? So, ye are gods, knowing good and evil. Judgment, pertaining on to judgment. Okay? We are not gods in the fact that we speak things into existence. Well, well Brad, what do you mean? Remember, remember at the very start of this video, if you've made it this long, I hope you have, where we read, I'll go back now to uh, Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1, look at verse 21. And God created great whales and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind, and every winged fowl after his kind. And God saw that it was good. There's something out there called the Little God's Doctrine, which is the primount of these wicked deplorable Catholic Pentecatholics. Okay? You know, the Creflo Dollars, the Joyce Myers, the Benny Hins, the, uh, what's that, what's that whack job, uh, Copeland, and all these guys. The little G God doctrine. That ye are gods. There is a video out there, and you can look this up on your own time. Uh, Creflo, uh, all you do in your YouTube search, if you really want to see this, to, to see this, this is what they teach. Put in Creflo Dollar, ye are gods. And Creflo Dollar goes to this about their own kind, and he does, if horses get together, they create what? If dogs get together, they create what? And this disgusting, wicked devil, Creflo Dollar, right? He says, but if the Godhead gets together, if the Godhead gets together, you look for that video on your own time, please. Okay? I'm not going to link it in this. The teaching is that when the Godhead gets together, what are they making? They're making gods. The little gods doctrine. That is why people such as the Word of Faith people, which is uh, taught in uh, Christian science, and also which is in the Law of Attraction, the book The Secret, which is the religion of Joel Osteen, who wrote that one book, The Power of I Am. Okay? See, these guys will say, will take that, ye are gods, in Psalm 82, and flip that and make it to be as if you are a little God, meaning that you can speak things into existence. Yeah. Yeah. The little God's doctrine is the big thing for these care Catholic Pentecatholics. Okay? We have just looked. Ye are gods, where it says that in Psalm 82, and which our Lord quote, uh, quotes in John chapter 10, has nothing to do with man being a little G God who can speak things into existence. No. It's pertaining on to knowing good and evil and judging thereto according to his word. That's what it's talking about. It has nothing to do that with this thing that you have the power because you are gods, little G, to create your own reality by things you say. That is blasphemy. And look at them. They, they, they all are into that. The uh, Dollar, Meyer, um, Hinn, uh, Copeland, um, Osteen, um, uh, that, that weirdo um, Roth, okay, Albert, all of them, 
These big time charismatics, the little gods doctrine, that they are gods, that they can create, can create things. Uh, Kenneth Copeland is even quoted as saying when he reads in um, in Exodus where it says, I am, he said, uh, there's quotes of him saying this. He just smiles and said, yeah, well, I am too. That is not what the little gods, you know, that is not what that means when he says you are gods. Okay? It is pertaining unto knowing good and evil and judgment according to the scriptures. That's what that means. It does not mean as the one brother inquired about, it does not mean that when he says that that he's making reference to that we all are born, uh, made in his image, having a spirit, soul, and body. No, it's talking about judgment. Because God himself is judge. Right? And we today, of the church of the living God, who have the perfect, inerrant, given by inspiration, word of God, the authorized version of the scriptures, the King James scriptures, okay? We, we know good and evil because the scriptures warn us of such. We know what is good. We also know what is evil. And we, because we have the scriptures and we have the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, dwelling within us, we are to judge ourselves and other things according to the scriptures, dear friends. That's what that means. It does not mean this satanic thing where you are a little G God that can create by speaking. Okay? That's blasphemy. And that plays in to Psalm 50, where it's like you thought you were all I you thought I was altogether a one such as yourself. See, these people who adhere to the little God's doctrine take God and bring them down to his level. To the level of whoever it is who is falling for this nonsense. And remember, too, what the sin of Satan was. Pride. Look at these charismatics, these Pentecatholics, care Catholic. Pentecatholics, right? Look at them. They're the special anointed ones, right? They're the anointed ones. They're better than you because they, they can speak in a demonic, or excuse me, devilish, excuse me, a devilish, blah, 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 right? And they all made false prophecies of Trump, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah. Esoteric and esoteric. Those who are the elect and the non-elect, remember? Calvinism, which is satanic heresy. Okay? Anyway, I do hope that answers your question, brother, who asked me of this um, some, a little while ago. It's, it's amazing of just how busy our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, keeps us. <laughs> That's going to be it for this video. Okay? Like I said, hopefully, hopefully this um, helps you out for the brother who asked me of this. Okay? Hopefully this does. Very quickly, too, all, uh, very quickly, too, um, I, I want to tell you, uh, brethren and sisters, um, many of you have asked questions and have requested uh, videos. Um, please do not get offended if you do not get an immediate response from me or that a video is not immediate and coming. It's shocking the amount of emails that I, Sinner Who is Chief, whose channel is nothing here on YouTube. Um, it's a 
amazing the amount of emails that I get. A lot of them are from men, uh, my enemies, under guises, you know, hiding themselves under other accounts. I, that, that, but I know that, but there are uh, several of you that have asked serious questions wanting to know from the scriptures. Um, be patient. <laughs> In our Lord's timing, they will come. I have not forgotten you or am ignoring you. For those of you who have asked me of these things, okay? So, anyway, that's going to be it for this video, brethren. Um, I love you. I hope this has helped. Thank you so much for watching if you do. We'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.